and welcome to Culture here on i24 News. I'm Ulid Grober. Thank you so much for joining me. Today on our show, we uh, talk with the editor of a new online magazine that focuses on photojournalism. A uh, look at the surprising viral campaigns for the upcoming Israeli elections. And what actual jazz musicians think of the film Whiplash. Archive Magazine is a new online publication that puts the focus on Israeli photojournalism. Every other month, the magazine presents the best news photography of the last few weeks and focuses on a different theme with every issue. Issue 3 will be out soon and will focus on Jerusalem. I'm very happy to have the Archive's co-editor, Ilya Yefimovich, in the studio to tell us all about it. Thank, thank you for coming in. First. Well, I'm glad to meet you. Thank you very much for having me here. So tell me, how did this get started? started? Where was the idea born? Well, like every good story, we sat in a pub, okay. had a couple of pints, then decided that we should do something about it. We have this, uh, well, the idea came out um, because there's no no magazines or no uh, no local magazine or no local exhibitions that dealing with the daily documentary or the news photography besides the local testimony. Right. And uh, we decided to make a collaboration between the international photographers and Israeli photographers in order to make a platform so that also young and promising mm -hmm. and also the very well known uh, will be able to have a certain conversation on the pages of the magazine. Um, as you can see here, photographs from the war and yeah. also like we have in different issues. The first magazine was dealing with the, um, the Gaza war and the second yeah. one was uh, dealing with religion. And okay. in every issue, we have an, uh, different um, different projects that we also, right. besides the competition. Right. That I, I can't recall any other uh, uh, magazine that deals with photojournalism in Israel. Is it just me, or do they uh, not exist? No, they're, they're not existing. There's n there's so nothing what, besides So what are them. your models? Who, who are you following here? Uh, we were trying to um, combine it, combine it from different things. First of all, it's the, the theme. Mm -hmm. and the competition kind of thing which we have the model from picture of the year international world press and the local testimony right and then the uh, usual uh, part of having an interview with the person so we having you every have interview we have well. an interview it's with not the just photographer. pictures it's not just pictures right. it's an interview with the uh, with the person that's in in the last three issues a photographer we're or? using photographers but in, in the future we'll be using also editors and maybe curators and the right now you uh, in your mission statement you write that you're not really uh, trying to compete with any news site or, or news organization you're trying to be more introspective and retrospective um, um, does that mean you think you guys think that people and, and journalists have become too obsessed with the scoop and, and are just going through things too fast? Well, might be, yeah. I mean, the news are running so fast. I mean, the updates on everything, you know, uh, like the situation there was in Australia not long ago in mm -hmm. the bank, in the coffee shop that was taking pictures, take, people taking pictures with the cell phones and uploading them. And there is no, uh, no moment to stop and see the actual photograph. Also, the photographs that are being printed in the local or international uh, magazines or newspapers today, they are too small and people not really looking at them yeah. as they can in our magazine yeah now uh, it's interesting you you mentioned cell phones I don't think we can we can have this interview and not talk about cell phones because the the um, I don't know the role it's not the role but the availability of, of the photographed image nowadays is unbelievable anyone has a decent camera right on them and they can take pictures and send them off at that moment, do you think the uh, um, importance of the photojournalist uh, is decreasing? Is If I'm a young, up-and-coming uh, uh, photographer, should I even consider going in, into photojournalism? Well, of course, it's a matter, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's of course, it's of course decreasing and there's a huge problem in, in the perspective of photographers not mm -hmm. being sent to different issues around the world and uh, people trying to get their budgets less and less on photography specifically. Right. Uh, but I think it's more of a passion. I mean, it's more of a hobby kind of you making your life. I mean, it's a lifestyle. You want to do it, you love it, and there's no matter to it who are you working for, who are you shooting for. 
Right. It's just, it's just a the problem that you have now. You're competing with so many people. It's just anyone uh, uh, is sort of a photojournalist. Of course, but in in the matter of cell phones, for example, we can talk also like back in the day, people were shooting with uh, point and shoot cameras. Right. Uh, one uh, one exposures. You know, uh, very well known photograph from a cover of a time of uh, Concorde exploding mm -hmm. in France. Mm -hmm taking by a Japanese uh, tourist uh, through the window. Yeah, you know, yeah. with a disposable camera, yeah, so it's yeah. the same thing as using a cell phone today. No, no question. What do you think happens uh, uh, to us, to the um, photograph, the image, nowadays when we're so bombarded with, with these images? Do you think, what can we do to, to take the time and, and focus on an image well, on on a daily basis, there's nothing to do with it because everything is running so fast, and yeah. also your uh, your need of information is running too fast. I mean, you have the Twitter, you just press it and you go, and you see more and more and more updates of everything, and you want to see it quicker, quicker, quicker. So I think in this terms, the magazine is bringing uh, some sort of stop, like highlighting an important uh, images, interesting images, mm -hmm. to see the quality of photography. Yeah, well, the images uh, we're seeing from, from the magazine are uh, very impressive. Definitely deserve the time uh, uh, to sit down and, and take a look at it. Um, one last question. Any, uh, how is this happening? How are you able to finance it? How are you able to um, even maybe make a buck or two off of it? Well, it's uh, we we are. This is not our intention. Our intention is to promote photography, and we're doing it as our for fun, as our hobby for now, at least for now. We uh, we sending. Uh, well, we have a sponsor uh, for the competition itself that okay. gives out a specific prize for the first part of the magazine. Wow. But in general, it's just two of us, me and Uri Lenz, that are working on it. Right. And you guys are also photographers working in Israel yes, and course. Russia and uh, uh, in the territories, yeah. everywhere. Thank you so much, Julia, for Thank coming. Thank you very much for having me. Now, Israel is uh, heading towards uh, unexpected elections that will take place in March. And, uh, while uh, some parties are still struggling to find their message, others have already launched their campaigns online. Surprisingly, the parties on the conservative side of Israel's political map were the ones who were uh, quick to release videos that immediately went viral. Daniel Campos takes a look. Humorist and social commentator Will Rogers said everything is changing. People are taking their comedians seriously and the politicians as a joke. In Israel, as politicians prepare for the upcoming elections, right-wing parties are aiming for funny campaigns that turn their leaders into comedians. A brilliant strategy in the age of social media where viral campaigns can spread faster than a news cycle. The most successful video so far has been Naftali Bennett's No Apologies. The Jewish home party leader recently dressed up as a Tel Aviv hipster, walking a dog and reading a Haaretz newspaper when the camera zooms in on the editorial quote, Israel must apologize. Throughout the video, Bennett is pushed and bullied by the people around him. And although it is not his fault, he continues to apologize to those who cause him harm. The slogan, no apologies, we love Israel. The left-leaning Meretz party made a response video in which their leader, Zeaba Galon, wears a dress code similar to that of a religious settler. Some said she was imitating M.K. Orit Struk of the Jewish home party. Likud M.K. Moshe Feiglin, considered an extremist by many, was also inspired by the trend and released a musical campaign video titled Ani Yehudi. I am Jewish. Lip singing to the cliche lines about the diversity of Israeli society, the lyrics make it obvious that Fagelin's target audience is ethnically Jewish voters. <laughs> Dani Danon, also of the Likud, used the opportunity to launch a YouTube video which is being called by some as chauvinistic and of a violent character. In the animated film, Danon punishes female Arab MK Hanin Zouavi who he calls a terrorist. The film seems to be inspired by spaghetti western films. Zouavi has threatened to sue Danon over this controversial clip. 
Ronen Shoval, a young politician and a new member of the Jewish Home Party, also released his own satirical video, making fun of Zipi Livni with a horror-themed clip borrowed from an existing popular video on YouTube. Ken Bello. Comedy and political campaign is nothing new in Israel. The main difference is that in the past they were created for TV broadcast and it was actors instead of politicians. In the 1980s, legendary comedian Sefi Rivlin participated in many funny commercials in favor of the Likud for the televised state-sanctioned political campaigns. In the 1980s, comedian Rami Hoiberger did the same for the Labour Party. Today, the Internet offers a platform that Israeli politicians are choosing for their outreach of voters. Whether these campaigns will be successful enough to attract voters is still yet to be seen when Israelis head to the polls on March the 17th of 2015. Well, wait and see. In a moment, we'll uh, see what, uh, film, what film jazz musicians will support in the race for the Oscars. But first, our uh, cultural recommendation for the day. Masvedo is an Italian duo considered as one of the most prominent contemporary artists of the moment. After participating in Art Basel, the Venice Biennale, and collaborating with prestigious and varied artists like Michel Wallebeck and Juliette Vinoche, now the duo, formed by Massana Nicolo and Jacopo Bedogni, presents Tode Strieve. This art project presents nine different video artworks, all centered around the theme of lack of communication. The scenography is designed to immerse visitors in a reflection on the relationship between art and theater, literature and film. A large exhibition which also coincides with the release of The Lack, the first future film presented this summer in Venice, about six female characters in a silent and primitive natural environment, who undertake a journey of self-discovery in a sublime, mysterious setting. And uh, now Daniel Campos is uh, here with me in the studio to tell me who, uh, pretty surprisingly, is uh, coming out against one of the most popular films of this last year. Absolutely, yeah. Whiplash is such a success, but it's being uh, actually negatively reviewed by mu jazz musicians and also jazz critics. Now it's that's, quite interesting. that's pretty surprising because the film is actually about music, about teaching music. It's a very, very uh, uh, successful and critically acclaimed film. Let's watch a clip and uh, come back and hear from you. Five, six, seven. Rushing. Five, six, ten. Five, six, ten. Ouch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so it seems like a film that's that you know certainly appreciates music. What what do actual musicians have to say? Uh, well, uh, we have uh, Richard Brody from the New Yorker, who's a good music critic. He's saying uh, the idea of jazz in this movie is grotesque and ludicrous. Wow. Uh, so it's, that's yeah, it's saying it's a caricature. That's uh, some some harsh words. Unfortunately, he's not alone uh, uh, in this. Uh... Well, a jazz drummer. He's based in New York. Daniel Friedman wanted to share with uh, with us his words. He says thinks the film the film is treating music as a sport. And he does not agree with it. Right. He's so. saying drumming is a soulful, ancient way of communicating, definitely not a sport. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm beginning to, to see their point. Is there one more to, yeah. to nail it in? Well, well, we have jazz uh, drummer and composer Peter Erskine is very highly respected in the scene. He thinks, uh, well, he's very disappointed, first of all, and uh, he believes music is made out of love. And uh, obviously this movie portrays everything as, I don't know, the, the structure and everything, as a lot of hate, yeah, tension, yeah. no freedom. Jazz was born from freedom, yeah, if you look at the true. history of that jazz. That doesn't exist there. So what sort of film can they get behind? Well, everybody is cheering, at least uh, in the jazz scene, they're cheering for Keep On Keeping On about Terry Clark, who's 94 years old, who mentored a 23-year-old blind pianist. And this is a documentary with a very positive approach on the music, friendship, 
positivity right and quincy jones if i'm not mistaken is one of the producers is also in it it's a very interesting uh, uh story there justin uh Kauflin is the name right yeah uh he he got together with um with the uh, clark terry because of their and i think the initial connection was because they're both blind absolutely well it has to do with age terry clark uh, can see less and less every time and uh, they had a strong connection right. from this uh, disability it does look like a very interesting film i suggest see them both uh, thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you, Adel. Thank you uh, at home for watching this as well. I hope you enjoyed watching our show today. You can uh, find us on Facebook and Twitter if you'd like. And we'll be back here tomorrow. So join us again.